Welcome to a new segment in the channel that the Real Airbus Pilot and I are calling Free Flight Friday. The objective? Well, there is no objective. The Real Airbus Pilot and I are simply going to record some random flights in random aircraft and share them here on YouTube. And starting off our Free Flight Friday series with something rather special. And in fact, this is going to continue on for the next three videos because we're starting our flights in Straven, the local home airfield. In Straven, South Lanarkshire, West Central Scotland, and therefore the town that the real Airbus pilot and I live. And as you can see, the real Airbus pilot is kicking off the first episode of Free Flight Friday on board the Arabasque Diamond DA62 in X Plane 11. And the scenery that you're going to see in this flight is Orbix True Earth. And the real Airbus pilot is going to take this fantastic version of Diamond's DA62 for X Plane from Straven in South Lanarkshire across to Peterlee Sutton Airfield near Durham, which is the closest GA airport to his childhood home in the northeast of England. And in the next video, you'll see me create a virtual flight in the Carinado DA62 from here in Straven across to Newton Ards in County Down in the Carinado DA62 in prepared 3D version 4.5 so don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon if you wish to be notified when our next video is published. And just like the Carinado DA62 in prepared this Aerobasque DA62 for X-Plane is incredibly well modelled and while I've been introducing this video the real Airbus pilot has been taking the Aerobasque DA62 from cold and dark state through to start up and he's now preparing to part Straven on the grass runway 27 towards the west before turning back on himself for a scenic flight to the northeast of England via the 4th estuary Edinburgh down towards Newcastle upon Tyne and finally Durham. So it's time for me to shut up and allow the Aviation World's version of Stig to get this gorgeous twin diesel engined aircraft into the sky. <laughs> Starting the grass strip runway 27 at Straven, you could see that the real Airbus pilot used all of the runway despite holding the aircraft on full throttle before releasing the brakes for his takeoff roll. As he climbs out of Straven, you can clearly see ahead of us the White Lees wind farm, the largest wind farm in Europe, which straddles the counties of South Lanarkshire, East Ayrshire, East Renfrewshire, and Glasgow City. For pilots departing Straven, the White Lees wind farm also is a great visual reference to the Glasgow ATC controlled zone, and therefore airspace that you can't enter without pre-authorization. I remember attending a meeting with NATS, the National Air Traffic Service, service for the United Kingdom at the control tower at Glasgow International Airport back in 2014 and therefore ahead of the Commonwealth Games. I vividly remember the robust advice being advised by Nats if we tried to enter the Glasgow zone during the Commonwealth Games and the images being drawn in our heads of a Eurofighter Typhoon from the RAF being dispatched to meet us. And as a result, most of us simply chose not to fly during the Summer Games. But no such worries for the real Airbus pilot departing Straven today in his Airbusque DA62 towards the east over countryside that I've flown over many times both virtually and in the real world. And what I will say is this scenery being produced by Orbix True 
Earth looks absolutely gorgeous and very real. And I think that it is clear to me that Orbix True Earth seems to work a lot better in X-Plane than it does in Prepared because I've uninstalled it in Prepared due to the massive hit on graphics performance that I got. And leaving rural South Lanarkshire behind us, the first town that we come to is Hamilton, the main county town and also the headquarters of South Lanarkshire Council. Just across the M74 motorway you can see Strathclyde Loch which was used for many events during the various Commonwealth Games that have been hosted in Scotland over the decades. Today it is a recreational park and for those of you who are interested it's actually located in North Lanarkshire not South Lanarkshire. The two Lanarkshires North and South are separated by the M74 motorway. <laughs> As the real Airbus pilot approaches the border between North Lanarkshire and West Lothian, you can clearly see that Orbix True Earth has modelled the new M8 motorway, which opened less than five years ago at the time of recording this video, leaving alongside it the old A8 road at Airdrie in North Lanarkshire. And looking at the texturing and level of detail being produced by Orbix True Earth here in X-Plane, I have to say it looks very impressive and very realistic. <laughs> Just off the left wing of the Arabasque DA62 from Diamond you can clearly see the Airdrie football ground. And in the distance the Firth of Forth or what's also known as the Fourth Estuary is clearly visible. And in the distance you can start to see the three Forth Crossing bridges coming into view. <laughs> Jumping forward, we're now approaching the 4th estuary with the Grangemouth refinery just off to our left. And ahead of us, the three bridges. The first bridge you can see is the Queensferry Crossing, which is the newer of the three bridges opened in August 2017. And today it carries commercial vehicles and cars along the M90 between Edinburgh and the Kingdom of Fife. The second bridge, or the middle bridge, is the fourth road crossing. It opened in September 1964, and until August 2017, it carried all road traffic between West Lothian or Edinburgh and of course Fife to the north. And today at the time of recording this video the fourth road crossing is used as a dedicated bus lane. The third and final bridge that you will see is the fourth railway bridge. The iconic red bridge opened in March 1890 and today carries all of Scotland's mainline east coast rail traffic heading north of Edinburgh. Anyway back to our flight and the rail airbus pilot's original plan was to fly under the bridges but noticed on approach docked at the Reside Naval Dockyard was one of the Royal Navy's latest aircraft carriers, either HMS Queen Elizabeth or HMS Prince of Wales. So the Rail Air Bus Pilot was able to do a 180 turn overhead the Queensferry Crossing in a bid to take a low altitude flight right across the top of the Reside Naval Base, which as you can imagine is something you wouldn't attempt in real life. But of course this being in flight simulator you can do pretty well anything you like and live to tell the tale. So coming back round 180 degrees heading from west to east, the real Airbus pilot's plan is to try and fly this Diamond DA62 under each of the three bridges. <laughs> So with the Royal Navy Dockyard at Recife just off to our left wing, the real Airbus pilot descends while reducing power at the same time. His objective being that only slight changes would be required to the control surfaces for a safe passage under each of the three fourth bridges. After all, any more than light touch can end in catastrophe for this flight. <laughs>
So after passing underneath the third and final bridge, the original fourth railway bridge, the real Airbus pilot starts to climb the Diamond DA62 again, heading in the direction of Edinburgh City. I must say that the quality of all three bridges here in X-Plane as part of the Orbix True Earth series for GB look absolutely stunning. I'll maybe attempt to do the same passage under the three bridges in prepared 3D version 4.5 in a future video in a bid to show you the difference between Orbix True Earth and Orbix Scotland EU. So as the real Airbus pilot heads in the direction of Edinburgh, he wanted to set up this flight to pass overhead the city flying from east to west, in some way simulating what it would be like to fly a low level approach into Edinburgh International Airport. So now approaching Edinburgh from the east, just off to our left is Arthur's Seat and to our right Portobello. And we are following the east coast mainline as it heads into Edinburgh Waverley Station. <laughs> Just ahead of us is the Easter Road football stadium and just off to our left is a much better view now of Arthur's seat and just ahead of us is the iconic Edinburgh Castle. We're now approaching St Andrew's House, one of the key Scottish Government civil service buildings. You can also clearly see Edinburgh Waverley train station and right next to it the Waverley Gate building, the old post office building that is now the home of Microsoft here in Scotland. And yes guys, I worked in that building for a number of years when I worked for Microsoft and I commuted in and out of Edinburgh several times a week. And as we now fly parallel between George Street and Princess Street, you can clearly see Edinburgh Castle off our left wing including Princess Gardens. And while I leave you to make your own decision on the quality of this modelling in both X-Plane and Orbix True Earth, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> And of course no low level fly past overhead the city centre of Edinburgh would be complete without overflying the home of Scottish rugby and of course that being Murrayfield Stadium known today at the time of recording this video as BT Murrayfield. <laughs> Edinburgh behind us, the real Airbus pilot is now flying southbound along the east coast of southern Scotland in the direction of the border town of Berwick-upon-Tweed. And of course the River Tweed separates Scotland from England. And as we fly over Berwick you will see that Orbix has done another pretty good job at presenting this border town. We were able to follow the main east coast rail line and of course the A1 road, both of which connect the two capital cities of Edinburgh and London.
jumping forward from our flight overhead Berwick upon Tweed at the border between Scotland and England, we're now entering the mouth of the River Tyne, heading in a westerly direction towards the city of Newcastle, or an attempt to be precise, Newcastle upon Tyne. The real Airbus pilot was telling me in his briefing notes that both the north and the south piers here at Tynemouth look very accurate along with the beaches at South Shields. For me, the last time I visited this part of the northeast of England, it was to catch the DFDS ferry from here in Tynemouth to Iomauden, the port of Amsterdam. DFDS called their service a mini cruise between Newcastle and Amsterdam, departing from the port that we're overhead now at 5 pm and arriving in Amsterdam the next morning at 9 am. Being from the northeast of England, the real Airbus pilot was telling me that this area is extremely well modelled by Orbex True Earth. However, he was very critical of the scenery between Berwick and here, which lacked many landmarks, including a myriad of castles. <laughs> Approaching the city of Newcastle from the east were overhead Walls End. The Jarrow shipyard is just off our left wing, and you can see in the distance in James's Park the home of Newcastle United. Even if you're not from the northeast of England or know this part of Newcastle well, you will however still appreciate the shipbuilding heritage that put this part of England on the map during the Industrial Revolution. And as we approach the city centre from the east, you can clearly start to see the bridges that separate Newcastle to the north of the River Tyne and Gateshead to the south of the River Tyne. <laughs> The first bridge that we come to is the Millennium Bridge, known locally as the Winking Eye Bridge. And it was one of many UK footbridges built to celebrate the millennium, therefore the year 2000. And then you can see just below is the Time Bridge, the bridge that looks a little bit like the Sydney Harbour Bridge, but much smaller. <laughs> Straight ahead of us and just below is Newcastle Central Station. And as we pan round to the south, you will hopefully appreciate the efforts that Orbix has gone into while presenting the scenery as part of their True Earth series for Great Britain. But as we leave Newcastle behind us heading south with the A1M motorway just below us, we are now approaching probably the most iconic modern art statue in the northeast of England, of course, the Angel of the North. I'm going to make an assumption that you can't do a fly pass of the Angel of the North like that in real life. However, the real Airbus pilot is still quite disappointed that the Angel of the North is depicted in the truer series, but iconic castles aren't. Whatever the reason, I doubt we'll ever know. But as we can see, he is climbing this Diamond DA62 from Aerobas to a more decent altitude, heading in the direction of the city of Durham, probably one of my favourite towns in the entire northeast of England. And of course the most prominent feature in the city of Durham is its cathedral sitting on top of the hill. Built in 1133, at the time of recording this video, the cathedral is 888 years old. And in contrast to the gorgeous Durham Cathedral, the other most prominent building in the city of Durham is its prison. And while it is not as old as the cathedral, it is certainly not a new building completed in 1810, making it 211 years old at the time of recording this video. However, for me, Durham is simply a gorgeous town. The twisty medieval-like cobbled streets just add to its charm. And as a result, if I had to live in the northeast of England, Durham is where I would choose if I could. <laughs> Thank you.
And there you go, guys. Durham Cathedral is just off our right wing. And just to the southeast of Durham is Peter Lee Sutton Airfield, where the real Airbus pilot will be landing this Diamond DA62 from Aerobasque. I've noticed myself in both the Diamond DA62 and the DA42 that when you fall below a certain speed there is a pretty awful alarm sounding which is basically suggesting it's time to lower the landing gear. So with the landing gear extended the real Airbus pilot is settling the little DA62 into a nice smooth approach towards the runway at Peter Lee. In his briefing notes he was commenting on how fantastic this DA62 is from Aerobasque. Personally I love flying the DA62 and DA42 from Caranado in prepared so I completely concur with the real Airbus pilot when he says that everyone flying in flight sim would ever version that happens to be should have a diamond DA62 in their virtual hangar and I must admit if I'd had access to 1.4 million dollars I'd buy one in the real world also. And there you go, welcome to Peter Lee Sutton Airfield in the northeast of England. And we hope you've enjoyed this scenic flight from Straven in one of the world's most beautiful GA aircraft, expertly modelled for X-Plane 11 by the team at Aerobasque, with an extremely well put together version of the Garmin G1000 avionics package. So as the real Airbus pilot taxis off the runway in the direction of the GA ramp, it's time to bring another episode of Sim Sunday and Free Flight Friday to an end. And if you like these videos don't forget to hit the subscribe button, because the best thanks the real Airbus pilot and I can get for these videos is your subscription to our channel. So all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching and wherever you're flying in your virtual world don't forget to fly safe. <laughs>